It's BRB of BRB TV at the Mid-Atlantic Nostalgia Con. You know, at a show like this, you tend to see a lot of classic TV stars. That's great. I love classic television. Once in a while, though, you see a writer of classic television, too. So, here for your enjoyment is an interview with Mr. David Pollock. We are here with Mr. David Pollock, who has written for several different classic TV shows over the years. Hi there, Mr. Pollock. It's nice Hi, to talk Billy to you. Ray. Are you having a good show? Yeah, yeah. Just sitting and doing nothing here. Uh, I've, I'm well accomplished that. <laughs> I can't believe that. You know what? I would love to hear about your book, Bob and Ray, Keener Than Most Persons. Um, what is this book about? It's a uh, biography of the fame, but uh, iconic comedy team of Bob and Ray. It's the only biography uh, ever written about them. And uh, they were together as a team longer than... Abbott and Costello, uh, Laurel and Hardy, Burns and Allen, Amos and Andy, and, and Martin and Lewis for about 43, 44 years. Now, in your writing career, you yeah. have certainly focused on comedy. Yeah. Why, um, how did you get into the business, and why did you choose that route? Well, uh, why did I choose that route? Oh, comedy writing. Yes. Uh, uh, I never thought of it as a route, but... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, my father had been a writer, so uh, he wrote more dramatic uh, uh, material than comedy, but um, that sort of demystified the business uh, as I was growing up, so um, that probably had a lot to do with it. And, uh, you know, there was always a radio going when I was a kid. Uh, and then, TV came along. I was always attracted to comedy shows, and it was just sort of a sort of an evolution. When I got out of college, I just sort of found myself in the business. Okay. What are the different TV shows that we have seen your writing in? Uh, yeah. Well, oh, no, no. I wrote for All in the Family, The Mary Tyler Moore Show, Steve Allen Show. Uh, the new Dick Van Dyke show. Oh, I love uh, Dick Van Dyke. The Carol Burnett show. Mash, Frasier. Uh, How are you? Now, not all of the same season, <laughs> but, but spread over uh, a lot now, of years. Now, the family, there's an interesting part of your resume because the writing of that show has That's been critiqued and discussed a lot over the years. What kind of direction were you given as far as Archie Bunker's controversial yeah. viewpoints and perspectives? Were you given particular direction on how to write those episodes? I'm curious about that. Zero given no direction. Really? Yeah, well, it's assumed when, a, when they want this writer or that writer, uh, the writer usually has a reputation, he has a background, and, and there's, uh, you know, to be even considered, uh, it's assumed that you know the show and you know okay. the character. Was the show established by the time you started writing yeah. for it? Yeah, So it had I, a certain... I, I think um, uh, I always wrote with a partner, Elias Davis. Okay. Uh, there's, that's done frequently in comedy, where you where there's a team to sort of spark each other, and uh, the material sort of arrives from bouncing things off each other. And uh, we just had a meeting with Norman Lear, and. Uh, we, uh, you know, had come in with notions, of possible stories. Okay. And because uh, you had seen the show. Because before, we had of seen the show, right. we knew the characters. Right. Uh, we knew, you know, how it works, and uh, they pick one, and then we just wrote it. Um, but to your the specifics of your question, no real, uh, you know, don't do this, don't do that. The only. The only words I remember Norm saying after we worked out the story was uh, head into every wind, meaning uh, meaning to uh, explore everything to get all the humor out of it. Okay, that is so interesting. Do you remember the particular episodes, like what happened in the particular yes, episodes I do. that you worked on? Uh, the t it was titled Edith Gets a Mink, oh. and I believe it was on in uh, February of 71. Two, uh, 71 or 72. How are you doing? Can't remember exactly. And it had to do with Edith uh, yeah. receiving a mink stole 
Edith Archie's wife, receiving a yeah, mixed doll from a, a cousin uh, who had gotten a brand new one. And uh, Archie was outraged because, uh, you know, his competitive uh, uh, instincts had been aroused and he, under, he said, uh, we don't accept charity and demanded that she return the mink to her cousin. I believe it was a cousin, maybe it was an aunt, I'm, I'm not sure, so long ago. And, uh, and, he, and he says, the mink is going back. And uh, Edith is in tears. Uh, but in the interim, while cooking, she, if I'm remembering this correctly, she spills a bunch of uh, spaghetti, a big bucket of spaghetti on the mink. Uh, and, uh, has to go. It has to go to the cleaners, and uh, and uh, at the cleaners, which was then run by the Jefferson. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, gets mangled in a machine. So now there's a lawsuit uh, against the cleaners, and this mink is now worth thousands of dollars. So she's already to plenty give it to the end and. Uh, Archie says, oh, not so fast. Now that it's worth money, this whole attitude changes. That basically was the schematics of the story. That is so cool. Now, Mary Tyler Moore, yeah. of course, was a strong symbol of a female, an independent female who had a good job, she had a good career, yeah. which was kind of unusual for that era of television. Talk to me about that experience of writing for Mary Tyler Moore and in that context. Well, it was uh, more or less the same, the same dynamics. You know, we knew the show. Uh, we wrote episodes in the second and third season, my partner and I. And uh, again, you know, we went in, met with the two executive producers. Uh, Jim Brooks and Alan Burns, and it was just about finding a story. Uh, there never was any, uh, you know, the, the aim of the show was not to point out how how an independent woman can succeed or not succeed. It, it was it was about how to write an entertaining and funny show. That's all they cared about because it's presumed we knew Mary's character. Mm -hmm. We knew all the other characters. Lou and Ted and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, then coming up with a notion, uh, breaking, you know, coming up with a, then a story, breaking it into scenes, and then writing the script. Okay. So what do you feel in in your years of writing? What do you feel has been your most rewarding work? Does this something stand out for you? Uh, well, we uh, we uh, we like writing them. Mary Tyler Moore show. Uh, I, I always say we laughed the most working with Steve Allen, uh, writing for Steve uh, Allen. Okay. Uh, not so much, uh, not necessarily it's stuff that we wrote for Steve, but just stuff he said on his own. Just, it, was a, it was an ad lib, 90 minute talk show with sketches and guests and everything. And, uh, you know, I'd grown up watching him on The Tonight Show back in the 50s. And uh, so, you know, that was fun. Uh, you know, they all sort of blend together, you know. I'm uh, sure. Uh, you know, some shows like better than others. You know, not all, you know, we're talking about all the hits, all of the flops, you know. I've left off the list. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you so much for your time, and congratulations on your book, Best Wishes for It, and have a great show. Thank you. Enjoy chatting with me.